What happened in Jonestown was murder. That's my experience. That's my belief. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're discussing 10 killer cults you should know about. I tried to actually embrace the lifestyle of being a vampire. And being so young, my mind latched onto it so deeply. For this list, we'll be looking at some of the most dangerous religious sects in history. We won't be including instances where people took their own lives unless murders were also involved. Have you heard of all of these cults? Let us know in the comments. Order of the Solar Temple. Obsessed with secrecy, they blurred their faces in this video they made. It shows the start of an initiation ceremony. In 1984, Luc Jaure and Joseph de Mambro founded the Order of the Solar Temple in Switzerland. One of the leaders, Joe de Mambro, was a businessman. The other, Luc Jure, a doctor. Their practices were allegedly inspired by the teachings of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn and Ordo Templi Orientis, as well as Christianity's Knights Templar. Like many cults, they believed in the fast approaching second coming of Christ or the Solar God King. At its height, it boasted over a thousand members in Canada, France, and Switzerland. In September 1994, De Mambro ordered followers in Quebec to kill fellow members Antonio and Nicky Robinson Dutrois, along with their young son, who he accused of being the Antichrist. Then, in October, 53 OTS members in Switzerland died by being poisoned, shot, or smothered with plastic bags, some voluntarily, others involuntarily. By 1997, 21 more members died in France and Quebec. What really happened to the Solar Temple may always remain a mystery. Did 69 people take their own lives? Or is there a more sinister story still to be told? Los Narcos Satanicos. In the 1980s and 90s, Matamoros, Mexico was home to a drug smuggling satanic cult headed by Adolfo Constanzo and Sara Aldredi, whose beliefs were a mix of religions, mainly Palo Mayombe and Santeria. We were dealing with people that believed in human sacrifices. We were dealing with people that, that had, to me, just had no heart. The cult performed and sold magical good luck and protection spells to drug cartels and other wealthy, powerful figures. Constanzo believed the spells would be stronger using live human sacrifices rather than animals and bones collected from graves. They ritualistically killed rival cartel members as well as strangers. And on March 13, 1989, they abducted American college student Mark Kilroy. He wrapped heavy duct tape around his, his eyes and, and forehead and face and his head. Uh, they assured him that uh, he was not going to be harmed. Among the discoveries at Costanzo's desert ranch home were weapons, drugs, and 15 corpses though it's suspected there were many more victims. The media dubbed them narco-satanicos, or satanic drug dealers. This group of Satanists who believe that the souls of their dead would protect their drug smuggling. The Vampire Clan. On the night of November 25, 1996, four teenagers from Murray, Kentucky, Dana Cooper, Scott Anderson, Charity Kesey, and Roderick Farrell, went to Eustis, Florida and killed Richard and Naomi Ruth Wendorf. In what was described as a ritual vampire slave. The couple's daughter, Heather, allegedly told Farrell, who believed that he was a 500-year-old vampire, that she was mistreated by her parents. And hours before their death, she was initiated into their blood-drinking vampire clan. While Farrell and Anderson entered the home, Farrell alone attacked Mr. Wendorf while he was asleep, beating him to death with a crowbar. When his wife walked in on the grisly scene, she met the same fate. A troubled and disturbed youth cannot serve as an excuse for cold-blooded, premeditated murder. Heather was never charged, but the others were convicted of first and third degree murder. Farrell was sentenced to death at just 17, becoming the nation's youngest death row inmate. His sentence was later reduced to life in prison. The electric chair has always been a uh, main icon in uh, the darker way of life. The Chicago Ripper Crew. In the early 1980s, Chicago had a series of abductions and ritualistic murders committed by a four-man cult led by Robin Gecht, who, oddly enough, once worked for serial killer John Wayne Gacy. Some of these crime scenes were really, truly horrific, even for uh, seasoned police officers. In October 1982, 
two young women who survived horrific encounters with the crew were able to identify their attackers, leading to the arrest of Gecht and Edward Spritzer that month, and brothers Andrew and Thomas Cocorales in November. All but Gecht confessed to abducting and performing unspeakable acts on more than a dozen women before killing them. My, my entire police career have never heard of such, uh, such a crime and, and cruelty to a human being that anyone could inflict. Spritzer was also charged with an unrelated shooting of two men. He and Gecht will be in prison for life, while Andrew was executed in 1999. Shockingly, Thomas was released in 2019. They want to see me back behind the bars, permanently. But they got to deal with it. I'm out. The Kirtland Cult. After Missouri native Jeffrey Lundgren was excommunicated from the reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or RLDS, in 1988, he started his own radicalized sect. As they were allegedly preparing for the second coming, Lundgren declared that the Avery family were disloyal and spiritually unclean. On April 17, 1989, Dennis and Cheryl Avery and their three daughters were invited over for dinner. Lundgren shot and killed all five of them in a barn and then left their bodies in a pit. I was constrained by the spirit and it was undeniable that it was time to begin to clean house. It wasn't until January 1990 that Lundgren and his family were found and arrested. That year, he was convicted of five counts of murder and kidnapping and sentenced to death. He was executed by lethal injection in October 2006. The Fall River Cult. They worship the devil, and they have seances, uh, with skulls in the middle of the floor, candles, spoken tongues. As satanic panic swept the nation in the late 70s and early 80s, Three young women, Doreen Levesque, Barbara Raposa, and Karen Marsden, were ritualistically murdered in Fall River, Massachusetts. It has also been revealed that her murder was a ritualistic killing tied to a satanic cult that exists among prostitutes and pimps in Fall River. All three were sex workers tied to a satanic cult allegedly led by local pimp Carl Drew. Robin Murphy testified that Drew made her kill Marsden as a sacrifice to the devil. Robin says Carl Drew forced all of these women to worship Satan and use it as a mechanism to control their money, their take. Murphy also accused fellow cult member Andrew Malte of killing Raposa, his girlfriend, for which he was found guilty. Drew was sentenced to life for Marsden's murder. For testifying, Murphy was charged with second-degree murder and given life with the possibility of parole. As of November 2022, no one has been charged with Levesque's murder. Om Shinrikyo Founded by Shoko Asahara in 1987, Om Shinrikyo, a yoga class turned doomsday cult, mixed various religious beliefs, including Buddhism, Hinduism, and Christianity. A blind mystic, Asahara had leveraged his intense personal charisma into massive wealth, creating a religious empire worth a billion dollars. Asahara's thousands of followers believed he possessed godlike powers, like mind control and healing. Once Asahara allegedly prophesied the end of the world, the cult stockpiled weapons and manufactured drugs made political assassination attempts and chemical weapons attacks, though some were unsuccessful. They carried out the murder of a fleeing member, as well as the murders of anti-cult lawyer Satsumi Sakamoto and his family. In March 1995, Ohm was behind the fatal Tokyo subway sarin attack, which killed 13 people and injured over 5,000 others. A doomsday cult called Ohm Shindikyo had placed the gas in five train cars during the morning rush hour. Asahara and 12 of his followers were executed in July 2018. These criminal acts were systematic and planned. The incidents were unprecedented and extremely atrocious and should never be repeated in future. The Branch Davidians. In 1981, Vernon Howell joined an offshoot of the Davidian Seventh-day Adventists in Waco, Texas, called the Branch Davidians. By 1990, Howell changed his name to David Koresh and became their leader. David Koresh was a monster. He was a highly unstable, self-proclaimed messiah who used the Bible and used scriptures as a weapon. He claimed God told him that he was the chosen one, 
and according to former members, had at least 20 wives. He revealed to us one day that or all of the women were going to be his wives if he wanted them. Koresh was controlling and encouraged followers to severely punish children. He constantly preached about the impending apocalypse and stockpiled a large number of firearms and ammunition. Their possession of illegal weapons led the ATF to raid their compound on February 28, 1993, beginning a 51-day siege. By April 19th, four ATF agents and 82 Davidians were killed, including Koresh. We knew it was a cult. We would joke about it all the time, like, yep, we're cult members. But then again, David would always talk about, well, Christianity is a cult. The Manson family. Charles Manson and his quote-unquote family are one of the most widely known cults in history. Charles Manson, his name synonymous with terror and violence. The family, primarily made up of impressionable young women and girls, were regularly given drugs and told about a race war Manson called Helter Skelter. Manson's ambitions turned increasingly violent, believing a race war was coming and that the Beatles were sending him secret directives. On August 8, 1969, allegedly under Manson's instruction, followers Tex Watson, Susan Atkins, and Patricia Krenwinkel brutally killed pregnant actress Sharon Tate and four guests in her Los Angeles home on Kalo Drive. The next night, Manson had Leslie Van Houten join Watson and Krenwinkel in murdering Lino and Rosemary LaBianca. What I remember most was they were like almost proud of what they had done for Charlie. At both scenes, victims' blood was used to write sayings like death to pigs to implicate the Black Panthers. Family members were famously convicted of murder along with their leader. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. People's Temple Jim Jones established the People's Temple in the 1950s, and by the 1970s, he had amassed thousands of followers. Some people see a great deal of God in my body. He got you so far in. If you believe in me! You couldn't imagine getting out. On the surface, Jones was an advocate for racial equality and social change. But soon, people realized he was manipulative, power-hungry, and cruel. In 1978, some moved from California to the Guianese compound named Jonestown, a place their leader claimed was a utopia. Every single person that joined People's Temple, every single one, they were so good. They wanted something better. On November 17th, Congressman Leo Ryan and a group of journalists came to investigate alleged mistreatment. The next day, over 900 people died after ingesting cyanide-laced Flavor-Aid with some being shot for resisting, including Ryan and members who tried to leave. Many were injected with cyanide against their will, including hundreds of children. What happened in Jonestown was murder. That's my experience. That's my belief. 